Good afternoon boys. So our next bit of your science materials. We just need to look at concrete this week and we're looking at concrete spalling, protecting rebar from rust and concrete ratios and slump testing. So what we're interested here in is how concrete behaves in extremes of weather, particularly freezing. Now Concrete spalling, this is sometimes referred to as concrete cancer, but concrete spalling is its correct term. If when we made the concrete, we didn't get it right, and we're gonna to get to that later when we look at the slump testing and the concrete ratios, but if we didn't get it right, the concrete can become porous. And you know from last week, porous means that it can absorb some moisture. Now it doesn't mean that the building's gonna leak or anything like that, but if the concrete is exposed to continual rain, it will soak up some of that moisture. If it then freezes, that moisture, as we know, we know what happens to water when it gets cold, it aerates and it expands. So as that tiny bit of water expands, it's going to slowly break away the surface of the concrete. Now, you also know that we put this steel called rebar inside the concrete. Now, other than the concrete flaking away, once the steel is exposed to air, that's gonna to start to rust. So air and moisture are gonna cause rust. Now, one of the things with rust is steel expands and it can expand by up to 300%. That's three times its size. Rebar won't generally do that, but you'll see in a moment, the whole sort of structure inside a concrete form is all connected together with the steel. So it's not just this bit of steel here that's rusting. That rust is going to travel down through these bits of rebar and inwards as well, more worryingly, and that's gonna create even more cracking and deterioration of the concrete. If you remember a few years ago, Hammersmith flyover was shut for quite a while and all the buses were on different routes and stuff like that. That's why it was shut. The concrete, uh, the rebar had become exposed and it was a process of deterioration there. So we need to stop this. How do we prevent this happening? We need to stop the steel rebar rusting. Now, one way is we mix the concrete properly, obviously, but also remember soil will contain moisture. It might not be wet all year round, but it will have groundwater. Remember there's a difference between groundwater and storm water. So what we need to do is make sure that when we put the steel cage in place, remember the steel goes in place, this is a formwork for a swimming pool, the, form, the steel work goes in place and the concrete is poured around that steel cage. So if you look down here, they've put their steel work up on tiny blocks. So those blocks stay there, the concrete just flows around it and the blocks become part of the whole form. Doesn't weaken it in any way at all. But it means that steel doesn't come in contact with the soil. What we used to do was just bang sort of rebar like a tent peg down into the ground and just tie off of that. But obviously that slowly rusted from the inside. So the more common way of doing this is using a thing called a rebar chair, which is this little plastic thing here. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Uh, you can get metal ones as well with their feet sort of dipped in plastic so the um, rust doesn't travel up through them from the soil. And you can see in this picture here, we've got rather than sort of rebar in its sort of form here, this is number eight rebar, um, we've got a steel mesh. Now, don't worry about the fact that that's got a bit of surface rust on there because once it's encased, that, that's not gonna rust any further. And we don't want nice, shiny, slippy steel. We want rough sort of steel with this sort of stuff down the side so the concrete will actually bind to it nicely. Now you can see just here, we've got a different form of rebar chair and you can see the concrete's being poured and it will just soak in around there. In this image as well, we've got our damp proof membrane here. So a waterproof layer. Remember that's different to a damp proof course. So this is probably something like a suspended floor or a raft foundation being poured here. Okay, so now we need to think about the strength of the concrete and testing the concrete. So to start with testing the concrete, we do this with what we call a slump test. Um, now, a slump test is a standard size sort of conical um, bucket without an end on it here. This is a video that I'll pop up on the website as well so you can see it playing. We fill the bucket up. It's like building a sandcastle on the beach. You pull this cone shape off and you just see whether the, the concrete slumps outwards. So that means it's too heavy, it's too wet. Um, 
or it stays in a shape. You may, if it's too dry, you might get something like a partial collapse or something like that. So this is a way of on-site testing the concrete. Remember, the concrete is going to be delivered to site by a concrete mixer. When it turns up, you would have pre-ordered it to a certain slump. Slump refers to the amount of moisture in the concrete. And there's a water tank as well on the back of the mixer that can increase the moisture in there. You can't really decrease the moisture in it. You can only add to it. So it will generally come slightly on the dry side and they'll add more moisture to it. Now, with regard to mixing concrete. So concrete is made from cement, sand, water and gravel. Now, cement is the bit that binds it all together. That's the sort of strong part. It's also the expensive part. So we don't want to use it just for the sake of it. But you can see in this table down here, we've got different grades of concrete and we can measure the grade of concrete in PSI as well, pounds per square inch, which is a measurement of pressure. And what you can see that if we want stronger concrete, effectively, the ratio of the other components goes down, which means effectively you could say that we're adding more cement to it, okay? And again, we so you can test, that's your sort of PSI, um, depends what you're pouring as to how strong it needs to be. You know, you need concrete that in a tower block that's going to be a lot stronger than concrete that goes in a house. We were working with um, uh, the guys on the Thames Tideway Tunnel um, last year a bit, and they were explaining to us how they're actually putting iron filings into their concrete to make some sort of it's almost carbon fibre type concrete. So they think they've got the strongest concrete in the world. They probably have. Okay, now, one of the things we need to think about concrete as well is we need it. Concrete's amazing because it can flow into any shape we want. We can make curved structures from it, all sorts. It's brilliant material. Um, but if we want it to flow into these different shapes, we need to make it wetter. And as we make it wetter, we make it weaker. And because we put too much moisture in it, we've increased its chance of spalling later on. So back to the start when we said we were going to explain how spalling happens is by either adding too much water in it, or if I flick back to this slide here, you can see just the edge of a float here. So this is a guy with a straight edge who's going to be sort of getting that. Now we can then get that concrete really nice and smooth. And what happens when you smooth concrete, you sort of bring a float backwards and forwards across it, or you get a power float on top of it. But that brings the moisture to the top of this, the very surface of the concrete. If you do that too much and you encourage too much of the moisture to the top of the concrete, the top layer of your concrete becomes wetter. And when it dries, it's gonna become more porous. And that can also result in concrete spalling. So, if I just flip back to the start, we've covered concrete spalling, protecting rebar from rust, and concrete ratios and slump testing. Okay guys, thank you very much. Only a few more weeks to go.